discovery of Sinaiticus and the discovery of Syriacus and, and the Washington Codex, where does that put our understanding of early Christianity? Well, it shows that, with regard to the New Testament writings, it shows that the copyists and readers accidentally and deliberately, in some cases, altered what they were copying, in some cases through deliberate attempts to sort of try to improve the text or make it more readable. How do you think that's changed the face of Christianity as a result? If you demand a verbally inerrant Bible with no problems, you have problems. If, on the other hand, your, your Christian faith says, I don't need an inerrant Bible, all I need is a Bible that basically puts me in touch with the core teachings of Christian faith, you're okay. If you demand a perfect set of circumstances, you're in trouble. Well, so what do you think about that? Hmm. Well, I'm not going to say a whole lot on that because we know how I feel and, you know, how you feel. So I'm, all, I'm in here in my main cave and everything, and I was going to show a couple of things, but, you know, probably not because it takes too much time and I can't get a wide angle on it. If you see this thing behind me, it's a big old wide chart, a family history chart. I used to really be in a genealogy, and, and I kind of sort of still am, but I don't do a whole lot with it as I used to do. I don't really get into it anymore as I did. And also, I went to the courthouse when I lived in South Carolina, uh, or my county courthouse, and um, I would what I do is I would go in there, and I would find some historical documents and everything. I've always wanted to find the very first map that my ancestors bought excuse me not that they bought but the land the land purchase the land deed the um a royal deed or whatever they got and one of my ancestors got a royal deed and i wanted to find the plant for it and i never could but i got stuff from the historical society kind of give me a hint where it might be so but still yeah i kept looking because I wanted to find something old and antique and something historical on the property that my ancestors were granted. And there was some, a piece of land there in South Carolina um, that, uh, you know, in Manning, where I used to live at, that's been in my family for over 200 years. And I always wanted to find it's like an old house, an old cemetery that was wasn't used or something, landmarks and whatever. And so I always want to find stuff like that. And so what I did is I started going to the lot to the RMC is called Register of Mints Conveyances. Mints Conveyances, how we call it. And it's pretty odd. It's like the thing with the Sinaiticus. I would find these plants in the trash can. Copies of plants that they're, you know, they didn't like the copies of and I asked the and I asked the person, the, the lady, can, can I have them? She goes, Oh yeah, sure. You know, they're trash, you can have them, you know. Oh, thanks. So I ended up started I started getting on this this hobby of searching things out, you know, and just see how far back I can go with my family history and stuff like that. You know, and um and and I got way back. I got way back on the plats and stuff. I try to see how they all connected and how they all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. And that's pretty hard because, you know, some descriptions are, even though they're in the same place, they're, um, one description might say something different than another description, but actually it's the same description. It's the same description, but how somebody draws the picture out of the plat, whether they put something there or put something that, you know, so on. But the thing about it is, when you get older, you know, like 200 years old in property, what was then was isn't exactly now. It's something might have been overgrown, you know, stuff like that. But I, I really got into that. I really enjoyed it. And I got plat books right here. These are my plat books. I mean, I got ones that I transcribed too. I, it did exact transcribe as best I could, and sometimes I would do it on the computer. I would overlay a sheet that I kind of roughly draw it out. I would lay it on my computer screen to make little dots for like little points. And then I would fill in those, I would connect the dots, and then I would put the coordinates in. 
and I will put my name on it as transcribing just in case somebody might be interested in my family or just in case you know I'm um, doing genealogy and stuff and family history and pretty much being a history detective as somebody I might know in those little circles who might be interested uh, I was always trying to get a plant of so-and-so oh I got that plant you know, I got the plant for the Robinsons. I got the plant from the 1880s or something like that. I got a copy of it, sure. You want to see it? Sure, why not? So I even got a copy of the plant of the town, Manning, stuff like that. But anyway, there's just so many things I love to do about that. And I think the Lord used that, my desire to do that, my love for doing that, for historical things, you know, historical detection or research or get into history and stuff genealogy to um, eventually put me in a position or, or to have a desire rather of doing these kind of things get into the word of God because at that time I didn't have the true word of God I had NCV I had a, you know like a, um, I think that's the only one I had at NCV also the New King James Version that a friend of mine gave me and so that's the only one the Bibles I had I hadn't had I didn't have all the Bibles that you see over there I didn't have all those I didn't have all these over here that's before I even moved here I didn't have those right there you know what I mean but I think the Lord and I know for a fact that the Lord put a desire in my heart to seek out truth you know to seek by his spirit to seek out truth to seek to seek out things um of the word of god and to go far back in history that I, you know and to see how the word of god came down to us you know and um, complete and um you know and how some people try to change it up and some people made mistakes and while others try to change it up but yet there's always been a stream for english speaking people that went all the way back to the prophets went all the way back to the apostles Despite people making mistakes, despite people trying to change the word of God deliberately, trying to make improvements or making mistakes, whether they understood the English or the Greek, I mean, excuse me, the Greek or the Hebrew, what have you, I believe there's been a continuous long stream that goes all the way back to the apostles, goes all the way back to the prophet, goes even further back than that. So, I mean, I mean, I, I, and I thank God that he did so many things in my life besides that. He He showed me at a young age, you know, that he wanted me to be his. You know, he He gave me an interest for reading. He gave me an interest for, um, for historical things. He gave me an interest for all those many things that which eventually concern the Bible, his word, and concern having a relationship with him. And I, I feel so blessed because, you know, who am I, you know? <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I can't explain it. I can't put it. I can't frame the words for it. But he has, and he did on Calvary's cross. You know, it is finished. Because of my faith in him for what he did for me at the cross. And I thank God for putting that in my heart. I thank God for all those hobbies that I like to do. Um, even metal det detecting, I was I was really heavy into metal detecting, and also for a time I was collecting swords. And then he got me out of that to collecting the real swords, as you can see. Well, over here, oh right, actually there we go. The King James Bibles. That's the sword. I, everything was a prelude. Everything was a forerunning to the thing that he wanted me to do and enjoy with my whole heart and I do so much I love the word of God I love collecting these swords I love doing history you know stuff I love to getting into God's word not so much doing what I used to do and like family trees and stuff like that like this over here genealogy but to know that I'm in a genealogy of Jesus Christ that's the best thing ever it's a uh, um it's a um what do you call that it's the um it's it's so good to know that i'm in the line 
of Jesus Christ. I, I, I mean, I'm a child of the Father. I'm an inheritor, you know, of God, all God's goodness. And that's what I want for my son. That's what I want for my family members, you know, to inherit God's goodness, to inherit everything that Jesus has for us to inherit, that God the Father has for us to inherit. And to have his Holy Spirit, that's the best thing of all. To have that desire to know God's word, to know him, to have a relationship with him. And that's what he wants for us to do. He wants us to know him. You know, and so I'm glad, I'm so very glad. I know I keep repeating it, but I'm so very glad that the things he put in my life, which might seem worldly at the time, were only for my good. That he used those things to bring me closer to him. You know, and he is still using those things to bring me closer to him. But the things that I used to do, as far as collecting swords, comic books, metal detecting, genealogy, uh, there's a couple other things in there. Um, you know, and um, transcribing, I, you know, I did a lot of that too. I did a lot of transcribing, especially I transcribed things and I sent it to his genealogical site and then they put it up on a computer and stuff like that, you know, for their... Um, you know, for genealogy websites and stuff. I did a lot of transcribing cemeteries. I did a lot of those. And they put it up on a website. You know, things that I did. And so, see, the love for doing that, the getting things exactly right. And sometimes I made mistakes. I had to go back over it where I was drawing a plan or something or other that from a, a, the original copy. I was trying to draw. I had to, sometimes I had to go back over it and do it again, make sure I had it right, exactly right. So things like that, and it's showing me and telling me that God has copies out there of his word, and there are copies of copies, and it's from the original. And it's exactly what he wants us to have. So anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you real quick. I know it's getting in almost 12 minutes, but I think you see where I'm coming from. I just thank him for the desires he's placed on my heart, because it is a desire to glorify his name for who he is, what he's done for me, and what he can do for you. God bless. We'll see you later. Take care.